All right, class, welcome to the second video on branding and design. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you'll find in this in the content of this first module. Uh, branding and design are pretty important. Um, they both are more artsy than uh, I'm good at. Usually I outsource all of this stuff because it's just something that I'm not like super great at, which is totally okay, especially in this class. But I do want to talk about some things that I, that are about branding. So when you think of brand, a lot of people think of like logo. And brand is not necessarily just the logo, but it's kind of like the overall uh, feel of the company. Okay. So these are all brands that we know, right? And these brands mean things, right? So, um, you know, when we when we look at Amazon, we see the smiley face. And when we look at Apple, uh, I mean, it's an icon, you know, it's Apple computers, McDonald's, the golden arches, but let's just kind of look at how these names actually came about. So these are the different types of reasons why, uh, where you can come up with a brand name. Ours is Southern fabric. That's a geography one, a region, Southern fabric. We came up with it when we were down here in the South. Um, but you have initialism like UPS or IBM, descriptive, uh, Whole Foods, Toys R Us. Uh, probably got to get rid of that one. There is no more Toys R Us. Um, Rhyme, Reese's Pieces, Dunkin' Donuts, Evocative, Amazon or Crest, kind of a good vivid image. Um, you can do foreign words like Volvo. You can do personification like the myth like Nike. You can do something punny like Lord of the Fries or Walk on Water. You can do a combination like Comcast or Micro Computer and Software, so Microsoft or Evernote. Okay, those are different ways to come up with brand names. There's a really cool uh, website. I think it's called Bebo, and you can put in a couple words, and it will tell you whether or not or what it can do to make up different uh, brands based off that. So that's kind of a little bit about branding. Let's talk a little bit about design. I always think of when I think of design, I always think of crap, you know, C-R-A-P, crap, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. So one of the key elements of design is contrast. Okay. So this has good contrast. This doesn't. Okay. Think, think about that for a second. You want it to, on the web, you want it to have good contrast. Okay. So that's contrast. The second one is repetition. This is a really good example of repetition. Over here on the left-hand side, there's panels, and those panels look similar. They have a good similar feel. That's repetition, okay? Again, repetition here also, okay? Now, if this went through the whole site and you went to a different page and it still looked very similar, that's also a good design principle. The next one is alignment, okay? Um, there's, you know, you have different types of alignment. You have justified, uh, left aligned, right aligned, and center. You pretty much don't ever want to center anything. Look on this page. Nothing is really centered. Even the text here is not centered. This text here is left aligned. Okay. All of these are left aligned. And this text is lined up with this text. This text is lined up with her nose. Her nose and head is kind of centered here. Okay. Um, this text and this text are lined up. Everything is left aligned. Left aligned is by far the strongest alignment of all of them. So alignment is key also, okay? The next is proximity, and this is a really good example of good and bad proximity. So here is just a list of uh, a list, and then over here, that list is given more uh, relationship to each other by adding proximity. Notice the space, there's more space given here that these are related to each other, okay? That's called proximity, okay? And here's a good example on a movie poster that I found. Um, repetition, notice the color, uh, contrast, black and red work well. The same text and feel and same proximity. Look at the distance between each of these. Okay, the distance between the text is outstanding. So they, this movie poster is very well designed. Think about when you're on a website, no matter what, the website has to be easy to use and it has to be useful. You can have a great looking website, but if it, if at any point it gives the user a hard time 
to check out, they're going to leave. If at any point the customer doesn't feel like it's a quality website, they're going to leave. I know my son was looking for some Legos. He sent me to this site and on the site, it just, it was a Gmail address, no phone number. When I looked up the address, it put me in the middle of some lake up in Tennessee. I was like, son, that's a lot of money for a set of Legos. I'll, I'll buy it for you. It's your money, but I wouldn't get it because I don't know if I trust these people. And he said, that's, thank you for looking that up. So you, there's a certain amount of the site needs to be professional looking to, in order for you to, uh, get that trust for someone to actually buy from you. Um, let's talk a little bit about design. Uh, notice this web, this old design here before was not very mobile friendly. Okay. Uh, and then after they had a redesign, it becomes much more mobile friendly. In fact, this little call button here, you should just be able to click it and it'll call. Notice at Georgia College's website, when you go to the director on our website, you can't just click the phone number. You have to like highlight it and then like hold it down, select it. It doesn't just uh, make that phone call. It's absolutely ridiculous. But um, I digress back to the presentation. Uh, Let's talk about the different types of design when it comes to making a mobile site friendly. You have two real choices. You have a responsive site and an adaptive site. Responsive is one site with different cascading style sheets. Adaptive is multiple sites for, di for different versions of the site. So responsive would be like, um, I'm on a tablet. It knows that I'm on a tablet. It shows me the tablet, uh, what it looks and feels like. All the content stays the same. Adaptive would be like, um, instead of brianmarshall.com, it would be m.brianmarshall.com. It would take me to a different site if I was on a mobile device. Okay, so two different frames of thought. Um, the responsive is easier to develop. Is easy to develop. You just have to change out the CSSs, where the adaptive is uh, harder to develop. It has better performance because it's built for it, but it's harder to maintain because you have basically essentially two different sites or three different sites. So let's take a look at a responsive type site. Notice that as the screen gets smaller, uh, things get pushed, pushed in even smaller. Things get pushed in, become more responsive and even smaller becomes like a mobile app. And this is a difference between responsive and adaptive. Okay, so even at this level here, the sites are different. Okay, this one just gets smaller and, and it kind of pushes things uh, smaller and smaller to make it look, the look and feel just gets smaller and smaller. Whereas this one is th essentially three different websites and you're pushing content how you want it to make it look and feel. So that's pretty much what I have on branding and design. Uh, just a kind of a short overview of some of the content that you'll find in the chapter. That is some of the things that I thought were pretty important. So um, hope you enjoy and we'll see you in the next video.